an interesting background. He actually comes from the dark side. He, he probably doesn't want me to say this, but he used to work for Syngenta. You know, the people that bring you GMO to your nearby farm and all of those things. But um, he then uh, worked as uh, a senior development person for Incotec, which was the major seed coating industry in India, so with a very, very large um, market indeed. And I think Australia's been very lucky to poach him to do a PhD on native seed coatings. Thank you very much, Kiraj. Thank you, Kingsley. Uh, well, my name is Kiraj. I'm originally from India. And as Kingsley stole, uh, my background in seed technology started with Syngenta. I moved on to Incotech. So, yes, I do have quite a bit of an industrial background. So when I thought of shifting into native seeds last year, my initial reaction was that, okay, I've seen the impact of seed enhancement on the agriculture sector. Uh, if you see the seed enhancement uh, market right now, it's almost 3.5 billion. And so my immediate reaction was that, why hasn't seed enhancement had a similar impact on native seeds? And I got thinking over it, and so I feel like okay, this, is, this could be a perfect idea for starting my PhD thesis, in which I'm now uh, trying to develop a product form for native seed, which uh, would help not only to improve seed handling and delivery, but also it would uh, help in introducing a precision delivery of uh, growth promoters and essential nutrients. So what I'm actually presenting today is a combined effort uh, for the Center for Mind Cell Restoration team towards a common goal uh, of my thesis. And uh, so here we present a first instant of a protocol development tool for uh, seed coating. Now, in this slide, I was actually going to tell you quite a bit about, about seed coating and different types, but thanks to Simone, we have already went through most of it. But in this presentation, I would be mainly concentrating on encrusting and palleting. Uh, of course, there are quite a bit of advantages, as we all have uh, seen so far. And yes, this thing has also been covered. Why seed enhancement has uh, quite a bit of problems if we introduce into native seeds? Uh, if I compare it with agricultural seeds, well, they have been working on it for quite a bit of ages. So they have a defined product form for each of the seeds. But if I compare it with native seeds, there has been no, there is no empirical data at all available in this. And of course, there's quite a bit of uh, knowledge gap as we are aware as the trade secrets are there. So they cannot share that knowledge. Uh, considering that, right now the problem is we don't have enough empirical data. There is not enough of data shared by the companies. But it's not like there hasn't been any research done. Yes, there has been research done there, but very limited of it has been published. So considering the amount of data that we have published, what we know so, know so far is that there are some machineries that we can use for the palleting or coating process. We have a list of uh, published data for the fillers on binders that could be used. But the biggest knowledge gap that I found that wasn't or has never been filled so far is the methodology or the protocol for starting from a seed to reach to the palleted product form using the information that we have. And that is what we actually wanted to work. And we have been working for it for about six to seven months. And finally, we were able to develop a first reported protocol development tool for seed interesting and palleting. And it got published in uh, July. When we were thinking of de developing a protocol, we thought that the entire palleting according protocol could be divided into six different stages. And this is what we came up with. So each stage is uh, kind of uh, distinguished with different color. I'll be going through each and every uh, step in detail. Well, the first step is, uh, of course, a general information of uh, any uh, operator who wants to do palleting, he can fill it a uh, day in prior that, okay, I'm going to work with this species, I'm going to use uh, different kind of binders and concentration. In this example, uh, we used two different uh, species. One, of course, is the agriculture species, tomato, that we used for palleting, and other is the native species, micron and supporters, that we used for encrusting. Regarding the raw materials, we used atomaceous earth as a filler, and uh, cellulose powder as a binder. And for uh, palleting instrument, we went with rotary coater, which is quite normally used and is a very precision palleting uh, instrument. 
this is a setup that we had in our lab for uh, our parroting trials, and this would give a general idea of the instruments or normal setup anyone who wants to do parroting process should have. Uh, they should have the main instruments, of course, as the rotary coating machine, the scale, the drying, uh, the dryer, the raw materials, and the sieves. I'll go through all of this in a bit more detail. Now, the work instruction that we have actually created, it is kind of work instruction that anyone can access and uh, customize it according to their product form. So what is their final uh, goal that they want? Uh, do they want encrusting or do they want palleting? Now the next step is of course just before coating what you want to uh, fill in there, what is the size of, uh, what is the seed weight that you're using, what is the quantity of binder or powder that you're using. And this note over here we have mentioned, it is useful to write down or to inform yourself that what is the final size of the product that you're looking for. Because, for example, if you have a seed which is 2.5 millimeter size, you need to know that what is the final palette that you want to, what is the desired palette, for, uh, palette size, is it like 3 mm or 3.5 mm. So accordingly, you can manage your uh, process. Plus, you need to also uh, uh, be aware of what is the size increment that you want. You, don't, you do not want a seed batch of 1 kg at the end of the parroting being like 20, 25 kgs. You have to have a threshold over there. So that could be written down in here. The first step is the coating process, the main process. Uh, well, it's quite complicated. It looks in here quite complicated, but I'll try to simplify it a bit to you. We divided the entire coating process into three different stages. In each stage, it's, it's a kind of a repetitive uh, process in which in every stage we just add a binder filler onto the seed using the palleting machine. Now, as you can see, we divided it into three different stages. In the first stage, the aim is to have a single layer of the material onto the seed. Now, this process is the most critical step because it's prone to having quite a bit of seed agglomerates or uh, dead balls. By dead balls, I mean the material kind of uh, forms very small balls without any seeds in it. So we want to avoid that, and which is why this process has to be conducted at a very slow and steady rate. Now, this is actually pro quite a manual process, so you have to add the materials by yourself. So at the end of every stage, you're prone to get like three different fractions. The fractions in which some of the seeds are like over palleted that are bigger than the size that you desire some of the seeds that are under palleted and the seeds that uh, the seeds that are that will reach to the desired size so at the end of every stage you have to sieve them out so the under palleted seeds will go back into the coating and the entire process will be repeated and the over palleted seeds can be just uh, thrown away and of course the desired uh, palleted seeds would be moving forward so once you have a uh, single layer around the seed. We move on to the second stage where the process speed actually picks up a bit more because as the seed already has a layer of uh, powder along uh, uh, onto it, it's easy to build up on it. So the next process could be uh, done, uh, done, uh, done a bit more faster plus the amount of binder and filler you're adding in the per dosage could be increased. So this process could actually go two times faster than the earlier process. Again, at the end of the second stage, you have to sieve out the material. There will be some under palleted, over palleted seeds. And depending on what your requirement is, if you're looking for an encrusted seed, so at the end of the second stage, you should have a weight increment of almost two to five times of the initial seed weight that you started with. So if your, game, uh, if your aim is just to have encrusted seed, at the end of second, uh, second stage, just sieve out the desired uh, seed uh, volume or desired seed size that you want and keep on to drying. If you want to have encrusted, uh, pal uh, encrusted uh, product form, you repeat the step again until and unless you reach the desired size that you want. Now, this is an example of how the seeds look at each stage. This is a tomato seed. So at first, uh, first stage, you can see you can have a uniform single layer around, uh, around the seed. And the second stage, it got a bit, uh, uh, we got a higher volume on it. Uh, this is the encrusted uh, product, and then if you want to have a nice round palette, you move on to the third stage. Now, as you see, at the end of each stage, you'll be having quite a bit of data generated. So all that data could be filled in the protocol development form, so which could be used later on to assess the entire process. 
the next uh, the next stage is of course the bet phase where uh, at the end of uh, your palleting of course you'll be getting three different uh, fractions one is the desired size that you want the one that are under palleted and the one that are over palleted you have to write down the fractions so you know how much of material has been utilized which could be mentioned in here and of course the time has to be mentioned uh, so that you know how much time it took for the palleting process. Uh, next is the drying where you put the seeds uh, for drying at a specific uh, temperature for specific duration and you uh, write down the weight of the dried product form. For our trials we just use the food dry dehydrator which is quite simple for us. Uh, and the last stage is of course the quality testing where you have to test the final product form. Is it as per your requirements? The first quality testing that we did was the crust test, which is quite simple. From per lot, we took 10 to 50, 20 to 20 seeds. We crushed them with the hand and see how many uh, seeds are there per pallet. Are the pallets empty, or do you have more than one seeds in it? That will help you know help, uh, help you know how was the quality of your process. So accordingly, you can slow down the process or speed up the process. And the second quality testing was a compression test, which kind of helps you to know the hardness of your pallet because the pallets have to be hard enough to go through the logistical process. So that, that is why you need to check the pallet hardness. For that, we use a digital uh, force scotch meter. Well, at the end of your entire palleting process and the QC, you'll be having quite a bit of data written down onto the table. But though you have so much data, you need to make some sense out of the data. For that, we have also attached uh, an Excel sheet in which you can fill in all the data over here or at each and every stage. And once you have entered data, when you go into the summary page, you'll be getting the results of your entire process. Results in the sense, what was the weight increment? How much of powder was used? How much was powder was lost? How much of binder was utilized? And what was the final weight increment that you got? So this uh, Excel sheet will provide a final result of your entire palleting process. Uh, well, these were the two seeds that we used, the tomato and uh, micro nasticoides, and at each stage you can see the weight increment and the size increment. And thank you. Any questions? Time for a question or two. What, at what stage do um, other additions to the uh, material, the, the pelling process, go in? Uh, I told you three different stages, right? So uh, mainly, depending on what you are adding, is it a contact fungicide or uh, insecticide or whatever it is, during uh, the f second stage, you can load the uh, chemicals onto the seed. Uh, I'll just show you a simple way. Over here, in the second stage, when you're adding it, it's like alternative process of adding binder and powders together. So once you have uh, half, uh, once you add the half stage of your mark, you can add. If, if your uh, chemical is in powder, a liquid form, you can add a bit of it in in the coating mixture. And at any time, at the middle stage, you can add it. But it depends on what you're adding. Last question. Uh, thanks, Kraj. It's uh, good to see this has sort of uh, been put out in the literature to sort of step through the process. Um, have you mucked around with sort of the different size batches and what sort of maximum you can do in this sort of current process? Because I can imagine if you're coating different sort of grammage or, or, or volumes worth of material, does that change up this whole process and how would you capture that? And, and where else would you put the things like if you wanted to add a surfactant, how do you, yeah, sort of how do you put it into this sort of current protocol that you've outlined? Yes, uh, for the initial stage, we use the rotary coating machine, which is a lab scale. But right now, what I'm working is on uh, upscaling the process in a pan coater. So in that, you can uh, go from a, a batch size of almost 10 grams to 5 to 10 kgs. So the, we are, uh, right now, the protocol that we have developed, we are modifying it for the pan coater machine. So some of the steps could be uh, uh, excluded from this. And so we'll be developing a new protocol for the pan coater machine. So there'll be just some additions or deletions from this. And as you said, for 
if it's going on pan coated, there won't be much difference in the steps or addition of chemicals uh, or insect insecticide. It could be added at the second or third stage. Good. Thank you very much, Kiraz. That's all time, the time we have.